light our darkest hour. Welcome to our video on Rodimus Prime, one of the most iconic characters in the Transformers franchise. As a member of the Noble Autobots, Rodimus fights to defend the universe against the evil Decepticons, but he is more than just a warrior. He is also a wise and compassionate leader, respected by his fellow Autobots for his bravery and his unshakable sense of justice. In this video, we'll explore the history and character of Rodimus Prime, from his humble beginnings as a hot rod to his eventual rise to the role of leader of the Autobots. Get ready to learn all about this fantastic character and how he has made a lasting impact on the Transformers universe. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. This is the end of the road, Galvatron. Who is Rodimus Prime? Hot Rod, later known as Rodimus Prime, is the main character of the 1986 animated film Transformers the Movie, as well as the third season of the Generation 1 TV show until the two-part final episode of the season titled The Return of Optimus Prime, during which Optimus Prime reclaims command of the Autobots and returns to being the series protagonist. To consider Rodimus Prime, who is also Team Athenia's leader, as just a wonder is an insult. Though his training sergeant, Cup, initially mistook Hot Rod for a turbocharged punk, he distinguished himself in a live fire activity by flinging himself into the path of a projectile to save his mentor. Higher ups took a particular interest in his activities, and he was allowed in the Autobot Academy almost 10 years before his boot camp contemporary. He continued to amaze command in the Academy, mastering servo to servo fighting and a diverse array of weaponry, as well as developing the energy bow that has become his hallmark weapon. After watching him in action, some started referring to him as a chosen one, and when he emerged as the youngest Autobot who was granted his own unit, many thought he was on the fast road to becoming Magnus. Hot Rod is frequently depicted as hyperactive yet arrogant and stubborn, with an inflated sense of self-confidence bordering on arrogance. As Rodimus Prime, commander of the Autobots, he is far more mature, physically powerful, and imbued with the knowledge of prior Matrix of Leadership holders. Regardless, Rodimus suffers from a lack of confidence, frequently doubting his own actions, and feels he is living in the shadow of his predecessor, Optimus Prime. Rodimus has a habit of saying insensitive and idiotic things to individuals in distress. Hot Rod's debut appearance in the American cartoon series was one of the several Autobots positioned at Autobot City during the happenings of The Transformers, the movie. He participated in the Autobot Metropolis fight and rescued the city because the city would have been destroyed if he hadn't battled Megatron. When Optimus Prime perished after being fired at by Megatron, Hot Rod was heartbroken. When Galvatron, a rebuilt Megatron, targeted the city after being reconfigured by Unicron, he fled with the Dinobots in Cup. After a sequence of adventures in the worlds of Quintessa and Junk, Hot Rod rejoined the other Autobots. He hurried to Cybertron to defend it from Unicron. Hot Rod was able to get the Autobot Matrix of Leadership after confronting Galvatron within Unicron's body, as the presence of Optimus Prime was felt, saying, Arise, Rodimus Prime. Hot Rod was transformed into Rodimus Prime by the force of the Matrix. His new form had a bigger physique, a deeper voice, and a new vehicle mode. It also obliterated Unicron's corpse, drawing the story to a conclusion with Rodimus Prime as the next Autobot commander. Arise, Rodimus Prime. Optimus. Peace prevailed on Cybertron for at least enough time for some of the most essential structures to be erected, and Rodimus Prime began to settle into his new role as Autobot leader. When Spike Witwicky and Ultra Magnus were abducted during the Galactic Olympics, Rodimus and Grimlock spied on the Decepticons to see whether they were the ones who did it. Rodimus reasoned that the Decepticons were generally behind everything, so they appeared to be a decent place to start. Rodimus was then able to interact with the Matrix and discover the beginnings of the Transformer species after being captured and severely thrashed by Decepticons, who were blameless of the kidnapping but were not fans of his regardless. He also discovered that his old adversaries, the Quintessons, had returned and were out to kill every Transformer to ever exist. 
To make matters worse, Galvatron soon reappeared, and the battle that everyone thought was done was immediately reignited. Rodimus Prime's most significant accomplishments in 2006 both focused on his ancestor, Optimus Prime. While fleeing a Decepticon onslaught, Rodimus and many other Autobots sought safety in a vast Autobot mausoleum, where they learned that their old leader had been resurrected. Rodimus, maybe a bit too trusting in Optimus and perhaps ready to rid himself of the responsibility of leadership, promptly returned the Matrix to Optimus, and, mostly to his delight, reverted to Hot Rod. His joy, however, was short-lived, as Optimus was swiftly exposed to be nothing but a Quintesson puppet, sent to mislead the Autobots to a trap from which not even a single one of them could escape. Hot Rod was compelled to fight Optimus Prime for the survival of the Autobots, since he had no other choice. Although their struggle was undoubtedly won by the more formidable Optimus, Hot Rod was successfully able to reawaken his leader's inner soul. Optimus then flew his spacecraft into the center of the ambush and martyred himself, and thus saved them all after handing the Matrix to Rodimus. At least, that was how it appeared at the time. As was so frequently the case with Rodimus, things did not end as smoothly as he intended. Rather than being obliterated, Optimus had been rescued by a group of human researchers who hoped to use him as a tool against the Autobots once more, this time as the carrier of a deadly hate plague, which would force them to attack each other. Rodimus immediately made a rescue team and directed them to fetch Optimus's remains so that their previous leader might rest in peace. When the remainder of the Autobots alongside him were infected with the hate plague, Rodimus alone was able to get away unharmed, and with Optimus's still uninfected body, Rodimus returned to Autobot City and sent Skylinks to get a Quintesson to heal Optimus before risking his life to close down Metroplex well before the plague could extend to it. In the process, he was ambushed by Rekgar and Ultra Magnus, succumbing to the illness and becoming infected with hatred. To end the plague, the revived Optimus had to overcome the crazy Rodimus and forcefully take the Matrix from his clutches, transforming him once again into Hot Rod, who became rational while afflicted. This time around, Optimus Prime chose to stay, and the leadership transition was happily permanent. Even after surrendering his role as Autobot Commander, Hot Rod did not like to sit back and relax. In 2007, he was part of a group of Autobots trapped in a plasma energy chamber blast and sent across the cosmos to the planet Nebulos. There, the Autobots joined up with a handful of native rebels to oppose the despotic hive's tyranny. A collaboration that eventually grew into binary bonding, the merger of Nebulon and Transformer into Target Masters and Headmasters. Hot Rod was bonded to the Nebulon sniper Firebolt. He went on to help defend Cybertron while Galvatron sought to destroy it with the plasma energy chamber. The name's Hot Rod. Rodimus Prime in the Prime Wars Trilogy Cartoon Rodimus Prime, portrayed by Ben Pronsky and Judd Nelson, was a previous Council of Worlds member. He reverted to Hot Rod following his unsuccessful attempts at leadership, claiming that he did not consider the danger that Starscream would unleash. Overlord corrupted Hot Rod into a dark version of himself when he stabbed him in the chest with a fragment of Unicron. This made his alter ego, Rodimus Kron, a key adversary in the Transformers Prime Wars web series trilogy. Rodimus Kron and Overlord assaulted the Combiners in search of the Requiem Blaster and Megatron, killing Computron and severely wounding Devastator and Menasaur. Overlord then commanded that the two surviving Combiners reveal Megatron's whereabouts. Menasaur and Devastator, undeterred, get up and confront the two, but are easily repulsed. Rodimus defeats Devastator, while Overlord keeps Menasaur in place. Overlord instructs Rodimus to smash each one of Devastator's appendages one by one while Menasaur is unwilling to reveal Megatron's whereabouts. Menasaur eventually buckles and confesses Megatron was on his way to Primal Swamp, just for Rodimus to murder Devastator regardless. After completing his mission, Overlord smashes Menasaur's throats and watches the sparks fly away and then leaves with Rodimus towards the swamp. When Rodimus and Overlord arrived, they saw the Dinobots. They questioned them about Megatron's next destination, which the Dinobots said was a library. Unicron took possession of Rodimus Kron and said that they were headed toward the Athenium Sanctorum. The two followed the trail until they arrived at the library, wherein Overlord assaulted Megatron whilst Rodimus Kron battled Windblade and Victorion. After slaying Victorion, Rodimus Kron shifted his focus to Windblade, who attempted in vain to persuade Hot Rod to come out. 
When Megatron shot the Requiem Blaster at Overlord, Rodimus Kron was briefly knocked unconscious. He awoke just in time to see Megatronus Prime approach and grab the blaster before departing. Rodimus Kron, now entirely possessed by Unicron, pursued him. Rodimus Kron later appeared during the fight between Megatron, Windblade, and the rest of the Autobots in Megatronus Prime. After Unicron departed his form to try to control Megatron again, he regressed back to Hot Rod. Rodimus Prime's story in various comic books. Hot Rod was among the Transformers that eventually joined Fortress Maximus in quitting the battle on Cybertron for a new world, Nebulos, in Marvel Comics' Generation 1 continuity. The presence of the Autobots on the planet, however, caused social unrest, which resulted in the Decepticons being transported to the planet, and the battle continues on a lesser scale. Nebulans were bioengineered into alliances with the Transformers as a result of the technological developments made during the fight. Hot Rod had become a target master, and was connected with Firebolt, a Nebulan sniper who turned into his pistol. The Autobots eventually decided to transfer their battle away from Nebulos. They tracked a signal broadcast by Goldbug and intercepted by Hot Rod to Earth. Hot Rod, along with the rest of the Autobots of Nebulos, was quickly absorbed into the greater Autobot force present on Earth, led by Optimus Prime. On one occasion, Prime was joined by Hot Rod and many Autobots on what looked to be a straightforward operation to stop several Decepticon Micromasters from invading MacDill Air Force Base. In reality, the raid was part of a bigger plan by the ousted Decepticon leader Megatron to divert Prime and his troops away from the Ark and pit them against Megatron's contender for Decepticon rule, the formidable Scorponok. When Prime recognized the more significant threat at hand, he ordered his warriors to instantly board the ride back to the Ark. Yet, Hot Rod foolishly opted to remain by Optimus' side to fight the Decepticons. He was thus present as the newly revived Starscream appeared and began ripping through all Transformers there in the name of Megatron. He was able to attack Starscream's rebuilt Pretender Shell, producing enough neural response to briefly weaken the Decepticon and give Scorponok the opportunity to strike and terminate the danger. However, the price was still steep when Optimus Prime arrived at the Ark and discovered that his loyal buddy, Ratchet, had martyred himself to help halt Megatron's ambitions. This pushed the Autobot commander into a downward spiral, which Hot Rod had to bring Optimus out of. He devised the insane plan of posing a threat using a Guardian Mark V combat robot with predictable outcomes. The robot went on to fail and harm the Autobots, yet Hot Rod's strategy succeeded when Prime ultimately broke out of his depression and defeated the droid, saving the day. After the Guardian broke Hot Rod's hand, he needed to get a replacement, but it all ended happily ultimately, so he had no regrets. Hot Rod remained on board the Ark with Earth's Autobot warriors and was involved during Thunderwing raid in the shuttle bay. He suffered considerable damage but was still able to continue. He was subsequently seen rushing into combat with Unicron on a hover scooter. He was also one of several Autobots that were annihilated by the Decepticons at Klo before being resurrected by the final Autobot. In an alternative future reality, Hot Rod evolved into Rodimus Prime. However, the Planet Eater Unicron succeeded in annihilating Cybertron, forcing Rodimus to lead an unsuccessful Autobot and human resistance of Earth when that dimension's Galvatron attacked and finally conquered it. Rodimus was killed during the war, and his corpse was hoisted up between the World Trade Center's destroyed towers. Galvatron came to Manhattan in 2009 to view the devastation and shoot at Rodimus's body, wanting to figure out just how many times he needed to murder him to wipe his legacy. After Shockwave's capture of Cybertron, Hot Rod decided to join an undercover Autobot cell led by Cup in the Dreamwave Comics timeline. RC, one of the cell's members, grew close to Hot Rod. Blur, Hot Rod, and Springer witnessed an inbound Decepticon shuttle taking the Dinobots from the Wastelands. Soon after, the cell saved Optimus Prime from Runabout and Runamuck and returned him to their stronghold. Prime battled Blur, Gnaw, and Wheelie after waking, prompting Hot Rod, who didn't know him, to hold the Autobot commander at gunpoint. It was only after he was chastised by Cup that Hot Rod repented. After Shockwave deployed the Guardian robots upon Iacon, Prime coordinated the defense cell as well as other Autobot troops in the world in an attack on Shockwave's fortress. Fighting side by side with the Autobot commander, Hot Rod was astounded to discover that the things Cup had claimed about Prime's bravery and valor were all real. Hot Rod, 
Ironhide, and Springer supplied cover fire. At the same time, a wounded Prime penetrated the Citadel, killing a multitude of Guardians during the act. They glimpsed the heavenly illumination of the Autobot Matrix of Leadership as Shockwave activated it, along with the rest of Iacon. While Prime and Ultra Magnus fought Shockwave inside the fortress, Hot Rod and Grimlock defeated Astro Train and Blitzwing. They were immediately met with the impending danger of a surviving Guardian robot, which was quickly eliminated by the appearance of the Autobot High Council, Defensor, and the Wreckers. Hot Rod subsequently defeated Cup in a simulated battle scenario utilizing techniques that, in Cup's view, would have destroyed them both if it had been reality. Only after his win did Hot Rod recall that he'd promised to accompany RC to observe an Earth-bound shuttle launch, which Springer gladly relieved him of. He was soon deployed to perimeter guard duties at Autobase alongside Gnaw and Wheelie, which separated him from RC. Rodimus, as he is now known as in the Transformers Universe narrative by 3H Enterprises, is upgraded into a Maximal, which looks like his Autobot form, but is some somewhat smaller and much more energy efficient. He is a Wreckers member, third in leadership after Ape Link and Primal Prime. He also acts as the group's Matrix Templar. According to the storyline for the unreleased Transformers Universe issue 4, titled The Wreckers, the Wreckers resurfaced on Cybertron and assisted in repelling an attack by the Quintessence. Hot Rod would also appear in Devil's Due Publishing's G.I. Joe vs. Transformers crossover comics. He initially appeared in the second crossover, when he was taken to Earth by a faulty Teletran 3 and reformed into an Earth sports automobile. He resurfaced in the third crossover, presumably as Optimus Prime's most trusted right-hand man. He would later command the united G.I. Joe and Autobots army that retrieved Optimus Prime. This was all done after he had previously assembled the squad to search for the missing crew that had gone to Earth and been abducted by the Decepticons and Serpentor. By the fourth crossover, however, Hot Rod is forced to stay on Cybertron underneath Magnus's leadership while well, Optimus Prime travels to Earth. Hot Rod appears to be in a high position of leadership here, outranking Ultra Magnus, Prowl, and Ironhide, among others, in contrast to his typical young rookie image. Years ago, in the IDW Comics timeline, Hot Rod was sent to lead a mission to the world of Kyaletta in order to collect a powerful relic known as the Magnificence and keep it out of the clutches of the Decepticons. The mission began well enough, with Gizmo activating a hollow matter producer to confuse the defensive systems. At the same time, the remainder of the team pursued the Magnificence. Unfortunately, everything that might go awry did go wrong after that. First, the generator failed, and then download triggered the Magnificence's security lasers. The security systems killed Gizmo, download, and backbeat while Dealer and Hot Rod escaped. Hot Rod received a call from Dealer as they approached the escape passages they had previously drilled. He had been attacked by a Decepticon assault squad and needed assistance. However, Hot Rod had been issued his own top secret orders. The Magnificence had to be the mission's prime priority, taking precedence over all else. Hot Rod departed Kyaletta with the Magnificence, leaving Dealer to his fate with a sorrowful heart. Years down the line, Hot Rod discovered that Dealer never had perished on that fateful day, but was instead imprisoned at the Decepticon prison camp known as Styx. Hot Rod entered the prison complex quietly, disguising himself as a guard using a hollow matter producer, before short-circuiting the electricity network and unlocking all the cell doors. During the confusion, he crept in, retrieved a dealer, and fled whilst the Decepticons were occupied restraining the detainees. Hot Rod was recently summoned to Earth to assist the team of the Ark-19 in obtaining a Decepticon replica from Braznia, an ex-Soviet state of Eastern Europe. He and Hardhead descended from the Ark-32, despite Nightbeat's orders, and joined the fight abruptly. As Hardhead moved to reinforce the main action, Hot Rod pursued the replica, clashing with Prowl. Both of them attempted to save the Georgie Koska replica from being killed by Soviet forces. Prowl and Hot Rod were eventually able to calm the situation and recover the replica, but before he was able to return to his ship, he was ambushed by Skywarp and Thundercracker, and he was unable to fight himself since he needed to keep the facsimile alive. He had to be placed in a CR room after arriving at the Ark 32 to heal. His wounds were in vain because the facsimile dissolved during the bounce. Hot Rod's buddy, Dealer, tried to persuade him to pull some connections to get him to Earth once he was fixed and reformatted as a Dodge Viper, but Wheeljack and Hot Rod were assigned the more vital duty of rescuing Ironhide. They had a run-in with the Machination's Headmasters. They attempted to flee momentarily but were apprehended, and Wheeljack was rendered unconscious. 
Hot Rod effortlessly held his own against the Headmasters, noting that they had now lost their edge for some reason. He had some assistance from Hart, who'd been primarily there to transport Hot Rod and the rest of them out to the Ark 32 for extraction to Garrus 9. Hot Rod refused to go because he wanted to witness the Headmaster Enigma through to its conclusion. Hardhead reluctantly let go of him. Hot Rod's search was cut short by Dealer's appearance on Earth, who gave Hot Rod orders to discover the Magnificence and utilize it to learn everything they could regarding the expansion. Hot Rod led Dealer to his secret hideout, which ended up being the world where they had discovered the gadget in the first place. As Hot Rod and Dealer approached the Magnificence, he reflected on his first journey to the planet and how everything could have gone so badly. He eventually began to have doubts, and when he found the Magnificence, he addressed the one issue that had been bothering him. Had Dealer deceived him? Unfortunately, it exposed the truth, forcing Hot Rod to murder Dealer as his betraying fake friend struck. Looking down upon his charred remains, Hot Rod realized that the reality had been hitting him in the face all along. He had simply refused to accept it. He then utilized the Magnificence to learn whatever he could regarding the expansion and conveyed it to the Autobots. Hot Rod finally joined Cup's crew. He sent out a distress signal after collapsing on Cybertron. He subsequently saw Wheeljack and Bumblebee, mistaking them as having responded to his call. He was dismayed to see that they, as well as the other Autobots, were stranded on Cybertron. Hot Rod chose to be changed into a smaller and more effective Micromaster in the Beast Wars Uprising timeline. On a rendition of Cybertron on which Energon limitations have rendered many of the remaining Decepticons and Autobots all but immobile. Hot Rod, who despises the corrupt system in existence, wants to improve Cybertronian society by working within the established administration. At the same time, his former friend Grimlock joins the resistance in an attempt to overthrow the Old Order. Hot Rod opposed Grimlock's efforts, believing it was no better than Megatron's resistance movement that sparked the Great War, especially when his plans included using the G-Virus to turn a substantial percentage of builders into immobile doppelgangers of Galvatron, oblivious to the fact that the impacts would also disperse a multitude of Maximals, Micromasters, and Predacons. Luckily, Grimlock was deceived by a member of his own troops, who destroyed most of the infection, but not before infecting one Cybertronian. Decon has returned! Scrap Interesting facts about Rodimus Prime. Hot Rod may be the Transformers figure with the most nicknames in the United States. Hot Rod, Rodimus Prime, Rodimus Major, and plain old Rodimus. Rodimus variants seem to be his fate for the foreseeable future, as Hasbro is unable to acquire the trademark on the name Hot Rod. Apart from the Energon namesake, Hot Rod has been referenced twice or potentially three times in the Unicron trilogy. The Power Links enhancement of Hotshot was provided a Hot Rod inspired aesthetic for Armada. Takara redecorated Hotshot, who previously had certain Hot Rod tribute aspects in his toy style, for Cybertron, with Hot Rod decor as a DVD pack in special. Hasbro later updated this deco and sold it as a new figure, Excelion, in the US range at mass retail. In the Transformers animated timeline, he earned yet another tribute in the shape of Rodimus Prime. Sideburn was launched with a color scheme similar to Hot Rod outside of the Unicron trilogy. Prior to the Dome Zero design being chosen, one of the early classic Rodimus designs was based on the Pagani Zonda supercar. Rodimus Prime had the shortest tenure as Autobot Commander, aside from Ultra Magnus, at slightly over a year. For comparison, Optimus Prime remained in this position for 8 to 10 million years, depending on whose continuity you're referring to. On the other hand, Rodimus Prime was Autobot Commander for nearly 500 years in at least some iteration of Marvel UK continuity. Hot Rod does not morph in the same manner even once in the Transformers the movie. Rodimus Prime Toy Line The Hot Rod Autobot Car Hot Rod, which transforms into a red race vehicle with a yellow spoiler, had been among the first Transformers toys made solely for the toy line, rather than being an acquired pre-existing toy. Hot Rod was designed by Floro Derry for the animated movie, and the toy was made from his character board. After the figurine was finished, the character board would be modified further. The toy includes two firearms. This toy comes in two varieties. The first batch has die-cast and metal feet that weren't painted, while subsequent shipments would have black plastic feet. The Hot Rod figure was relaunched by Takara in 2000 after attempting to retrofit it from the Target Master edition. Aside from that, the flame decos were now stamped rather than labeled. 
Hasbro launched it as Rodimus Major in 2002, as one of the Toys R Us special commemorative series line. His feet are die-cast metal in both forms. Black Rodimus has the same figurine mold. Rodimus Prime, the Autobot Hero Rodimus Prime was created in the same manner that Hot Rod was. Rodimus turns from a robot and fighting station to a camping trailer and a flatbed truck like a Winnebago. The toy includes a photon eliminator weapon, as well as two blast shields that can be attached to each side of his movable defensive bay's weapon. During the modification, the yellow spoiler also has to be replaced and removed. There are material variances, like with Hot Rod. Original distributions had rubber tires and metal toes, but later shipments substituted both with black plastic. In 2004, the toy with metal toes and rubber tires was re-released in both the United States and Japan. This cast for the figurine was later redecorated as a Primus Lucky Draw Prize. Hot Rod, the Target Master A year after his first release, Hot Rod was relaunched with his newest Nebulan Target Master companion, Firebolt. The toy was reworked to include larger peg holes between his fists and engine block to accommodate the Target Master weapon. Later versions of this doll reworked his lower legs to prevent his thigh decals from dragging. Takara released Target Master Hot Rod around 2004 as a type of ultimate model with metal toes, as the previous models all utilized plastic, and the non-Target Master versions too, photon lasers. Crystal Rodimus, the Autobot Car Crystal Rodimus was one of the first e-hobby exclusives, using the reissued Hot Rod mold but made nearly entirely in clear plastics. He was only available as a pair alongside the villainous clone Black Rodimus. Rodimus Convoy Rodimus Convoy was released in 1986 as a pull-string vinyl figurine with four Japanese slogans. The TV version of the Rodimus Convoy is a massively deformed version that transforms and has a rudimentary motor. He comes with a miniature replica of the Photon Eliminator gun that he could hold in his arms or attach to the truck's roof while in the Koro Q vehicular form. The metallic variant has a metallic flake coating for the base and a gold color for Rodimus's back wings. Fundamentally, the toy is the same. Star Convoy with Hot Rodimus Star Convoy was relaunched in 2005 with many deco alterations, including the substitution of paint applications for the decals in use on Hot Rod. Hot Rod's MicroMaster form, which is exclusively available with Star Convoy, is a reduced version of his classic toy, morphing into the same dystopian race car. Hot Rod could sit within Star Convoy's chest while he is in robot mode. In contempt of this court. I have nothing but contempt for this court. Marvelous Verdict. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of Rodimus Prime. We hope you have enjoyed learning about this fantastic character and his role in the Transformers franchise. From his humble beginnings as Hot Rod to his eventual rise to leadership, Rodimus has inspired countless fans with his bravery, compassion, and unwavering commitment to justice. His impact on the Transformers universe cannot be overstated, and he will always be remembered as a true hero. We hope you have a newfound appreciation for Rodimus Prime, and we look forward to sharing more about the Transformers and their adventures with you in the future. And, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. This has been Corey Whelan for Marvelous Videos. Have a good one, be safe out there, and thanks for watching.